So what are the common uh, therapies that you are using right now to manage these patients? And uh, uh, you, you'd like to tell us a little bit about the recently approved uh, metaleptin for these patients? Before that medication, the standard medications that are available are metformin, which actually is very, if, if started very slowly in children or even adults, it's a very well-tolerated medication and it really helps bring down this extreme insulin resistance. The other medication that I find that I use very quickly is concentrated insulin because many of the typical forms of insulin just aren't potent or strong enough for this degree of insulin resistance. And these patients have very little body fat, so they really can't tolerate large injections and volumes of insulin. So You're talking about the U500 The U500 insulin. insulin. Yes. Okay. 500 units in one ml compared to the conventional insulin, which has just about 100 units in an ml. Yeah. And ahead. we use that insulin yeah. in any age patient. But then the exciting medication that you and I have been able to be a part of the last 14 years has been the development of leptin hormone replacement therapy in these patients. And just like how insulin in type 1 diabetes is a very important medication, here is another condition, endocrine condition, where we had a deficient hormone state. And we were able to show that by replacing that hormone that they lack, as leptin's only made in fat tissue, we were able to um, really ameliorate a lot of these metabolic complications that patients were having. So certainly, yes, uh, we have seen many patients who required almost 1,000 or more units of insulin. After initiation of uh, leptin replacement therapy, they didn't require that insulin or they did not require the lipid-lowering drugs that they were taking uh, after, let's say, six months or a year of uh, leptin replacement therapy. So the, uh, the first patient, just an example of how, how extreme the condition is before this therapy and then how dramatic it can improve. The first patient we had on leptin hormone replacement therapy, she needed to have um, plasma phoresis three times a week in order to keep her triglyceride levels low enough and prevent her from having pancreatitis. She had such bad xanthoma on her all over her body that her father had to carry her into NIH. She couldn't walk on her feet. And within four months of leptin hormone replacement therapy, she was able to stop the um, three times a week plasma phoresis. And today she has three young children and, and she was able to go to college. And you know, just such sure. a big change from that moment of her father having to carry her into NIH. And, She's just so thin with all the treatments she had to go through to try to keep herself out of, I mean, out of this frequent pancreatitis and extreme insulin resistance. So I'd like to add that, you know, uh, FDA has recently approved uh, metaleptin, also called Myelept, for patients with generalized lipodystrophies. We mentioned that there are other patients with partial lipodystrophies, and at this time it is not approved for partial lipodystrophies because of variable response in the small clinical trials which have been done, but uh, we look forward to, uh, to doing more clinical trials in other patients with partial lipodystrophies to find out who are the patients who have partial lipodystrophy who are more likely to benefit from this leptin replacement therapy. This what about, sort of, yeah, go ahead. I was just going yeah. to say that in, in most of the rare diseases, the development of a drug for the rare disorder often spins off uh, Ver, um, new applications for those drugs yes. to people who you would not have expected would benefit from it. And so this is very important for pharmaceutical companies to realize that their reluctance maybe to look at a rare disease uh, and when they see the fact that they may be able to help a larger population financially that's more beneficial to them. Uh, and uh, certainly the spread to the um, other people will improve the life of everyone. So rare disorders are clearly, the development of drugs for them is clearly something that we all benefit from. So what about uh, diet modification in controlling metabolic complications in these patients? 
So that's a, a little bit of a double-edged sword. Um, often the patients, no matter how well they ate without lectin replacement therapy, they could have been the best eaters in the world and it would have never brought their triglycerides or glucose levels under control. But then on the flip side of it, with leptin replacement therapy, the patients also concurrently need to be having a very well-balanced diet. We've actually had patients come to NIH where we would have to take them off leptin therapy just to um, measure the acute changes, what happens when they come off. And then we do have to clamp their diet in order to measure just the change off leptin therapy. So we've had to develop the ideal diet for these patients. And we found that actually a diet of 55% carbohydrates, 20% protein, and 25% fat is the best for them because if there's too, often if it's too low a fat, then the immediate reaction is to eat more carbs, but excess carbohydrate intake leads to increased triglyceride synthesis. So it is a balance, but I've often found the way these patients need to eat is the way I need to eat and everyone needs to eat. They're just more susceptible to the changes than you and I are. Sure. It's important you have dietitians. I mean, this is a, a point for clinical care teams. Um, for this disease and many rare diseases, it's um, not just the doctor, not just the nurse practitioner, but the combination of all the members of the team that play a health role. And my dietitian with metabolic diseases, lipodystrophies, and others plays a critical role in, in the health of my patients. And without her, I would not be able to achieve in our clinic what we've been able to do, keeping kids healthy and preventing further complications. So team work, from what it sounds like you're doing, um, is critical.